everyone we will start ninth class physics flotation okay so what is flotation what is the principle of flotation and what are the conditions when a body to float or to sink so what happen when a body immerse in water what happens to it when a body immerse in liquid two forces act on the body two forces acted on the body so first thing the weight of the body acting vertically downward this is the weight of the body acting downward okay that is through the center of gravity that is w weight of the body what w weight of the body that is what w this is one type force acted downward acted another force what happen the up thrust that is called buoyant force that the buoyant force of the liquid acting vertically upward through the center of buoyancy center of buoyancy so what is center of buoyancy the center of gravity of the displaced liquid so what happened two forces acted on the body one is weight of the body w that is what from w you know that is what m into g m into mass is what volume into density so volume of the object into density into what g that is one w is equal to v d g volume of the object density of the object and that g is the acceleration due to gravity another force what acted that buoyant force buoyant force i told you that formula v rho g what is v volume of the object submerged volume of the body submerged submerged into density of liquid density of density of liquid into g okay that two force acted what happen when a body immersed in immersed in liquid what happen the buoyant force acted so buoyant force that will should be maximum buoyant force because if a body immersed partially the buoyant force is less in comparison comparison to a body completely immersed so always you take the buoyant force maximum okay now come to the conditions for a body to float or sink in a liquid what are the conditions so first condition you see case one case one what weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force if w is greater than the buoyant force see what happen see the diagram what happen first point the body will sink in the liquid understood if the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force the body will sink in the liquid first point second point what happen the apparent weight of the body that is w minus what happen the buoyant force the difference that is apparent weight of the body inside the liquid that acting vertically downwards okay vertically downwards and what is the third point the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy will coincide each other so they this is the point the point of center of gravity and the center of buoyancy they coincide each other so what is the third next point what you got here another point that is fourth point what you got so what is the what is the relation of the density relation between density so as you know w is greater than buoyant force okay w is what mass that weight of the body that is mass of solid into what gravitation g greater than buoyant force what is buoyant force v volume of the liquid summers into density into g okay so now g g cancel so what you got mass of the solid object greater than volume of the volume of the liquid volume of what this is volume of the solid so now see that mass of the solid g g g cancel what happen greater than the volume of solid into what density of liquid so you know mass of solid is what formula that mass will density into volume so density of solid into volume of solid is greater than volume of solid and density of liquid so volume volume cancel so what you got density of solid is greater than density of liquid this is one point so understood again i am telling the fourth point what happen if the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force weight of the body formula you know mass into acceleration due to gravity mass of solid into g here what happen that buoyant force will v rho g v what volume of solid into that density of liquid into g okay 
सो जी इज कैंसल व्हाट यू गॉट मास ऑफ सॉलिड इज ग्रेटर देन वॉल्यूम ऑफ सॉलिड इनटू दैट डेंसिटी ऑफ लिक्विड बट यू पुट द फॉर्मूला मास ऑफ सॉलिड यू नो डेंसिटी इनटू वॉल्यूम सो डेंसिटी ऑफ सॉलिड इनटू व्हाट वॉल्यूम ऑफ सॉलिड सो बोथ कैंसल बोथ कैंसल सो व्हाट यू गॉट डेंसिटी ऑफ सॉलिड इज ग्रेटर देन डेंसिटी ऑफ लिक्विड सो अंडरस्टूड ना कम टू केस टू कम टू केस टू वेन द वेट ऑफ द बॉडी इज इक्वल टू द पॉइंट फोर्स वट हापन दी वट हापन इन दिस केस द बॉडी विल फ्लोट द बॉडी विल फ्लोट जस्ट बिलो द सर्फेस ऑफ वाटर यू सी द डायग्राम बिलो द सर्फेस ऑफ वाटर ना सेकेंड पॉइंट द अपरेन्ट वेट विल जीरो इन दिस केस बिकज बट बोथ आर इक्वाल सो दे आर बी फू डिफरेन्स डब्ल्यू माइनस एफ वट इज दपरेन्ट वेट डब्ल्यू माइनस वाट एफ बी बोथ आर इक्वाल सो वी केम वाट जीरो सो अपरेन्ट वेट बिकेम जीरो थर्ड पॉइंट The center of buoyancy and the center of gravity coincide each other. See, both are. This is the center of gravity. This is the center of buoyancy. Now, what is the next fourth point? The relation between density. Same thing. W is what is equal to buoyant force. Same formula put. Mass of solid into g is equal to volume of solid density of liquid into g. So g g cancel. Now put the formula. That was what is mass equal to density. Into volume, so density of solid in volume of solid is equal to volume of solid then L. So this is cancel, so volume will cancel. So density of solid is equal to what density of liquid. You write density of liquid. So you can write d or you can do both. You can write no problem. Okay, density you d also write and do also you can write. So in the third case, what happen? Density of solid is equal to density of liquid. Okay, now come to the case three. What the case three? If the weight of the body is less than the buoyant force, weight of the body is less means W is less than the buoyant force. So what happen? The first point, the body will float partially above the surface of water. Partially, some most part emerge and little part out outside the water. So the body will float partially above the surface of water. But the second point, the apparent weight of the body will be zero. Why? Because the much portion of the body will be immersed, by which the weight of the liquid displays balances the total weight of the body. Therefore, in this case, the apparent weight is zero. Okay. Now, the come to the next point. What is the next point? I told you the density. You compare same. W is less than buoyant force. Now put W is equal to mg mass of solid into g less than volume of solid density of liquid into g. So g g. Cancel put the formula of mass density of solid into volume of solid. We have volume of solid density of liquid. So what happen? Cancel. So density of solid is what less than density of liquid. So in the three cases understood with the condition for floating and and sinking. So now from this what do got? We got the principle of flotation. That is law of flotation. What is the principle of flotation? The principle of flotation states that the weight of a floating body. Is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the submerged part of the body. You remember this this law of flotation. You can tell. But again, I am telling the principle of flotation states that the weight of a floating body is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the submerged part of the body. Okay. So remember this law. Then now we will discuss some application of law of flotation. So first, the flotation of iron ships. You know that an iron nail sinks in water, while a ship made of iron does not sink but keeps on floating. Why? As the density of iron is greater than the density of water, therefore we place a iron nail on the surface of water. The weight of nail is greater than the weight of water displaced, so it sinks. In other hand, an iron ship does not sink because a ship is made of hollow from inside. Which reduces the average density of ship than that of water, so a ship floats on water. Therefore, even when a small part of ship is submerged, the weight of water displaced becomes equal to the weight of the entire ship. So the iron ship keeps on floating. Now come to the second thing: flotation of fish. The fishes have an organ called swim bladder. When a fish has to rise up in water, it diffuses gas from its fluid into the bladder. So its volume increases 
and its average density decreases. So therefore, the increasing in volume of water displaced by the fish and the upthrust on fish increases due to which the fish rises off. When the fish has to come down, it makes empty its bladder to the required extent so that volume decreases and the density increases. Hence, upthrust on fish decreases and it sinks in water. Now come to the flotation of submarines. A submarine is a fish-shaped watertight boat provided with several ballast tanks in its front and rear parts. So what happens in case of submarine? A submarine can be made of made to dive into water or rise to the surface of water. When a submarine is to dive, its ballast tanks are filled with water so that the average density of submarine becomes greater than the density of seawater and the submarine dives into water. If the submarine is to rise, water from the ballast tanks is forced out into the sea by allowing the compressed air to the enter the tank. This makes the average density of submarine less than the sea water. So, it rises up to the surface of water. Now come to the flotation of ice bars. You know that the density of ice is, near, is in 0 0.917 gram per cubic centimeter which is less than the density of water. You know the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Therefore, huge masses of ice known as ice bars are able to float on water. It has been found that the major part of ice bars nearly 90% inside the water, only the small part nearly about 10% in outside the water. So the icebergs are dangerous for ships. Since the portion of iceberg inside the water surface depends upon the density of seawater, therefore the driver of the ship, it is difficult to estimate the size of iceberg. Thus an iceberg is very dangerous for a ship as it may collide with the ship or cause damage. Now come to discuss the flotation of balloons in air. That when lighter gases like hydrogen or helium whose density is less than air are filled in balloons, the weight of the air displaced by the inflated balloon becomes more than the weight of the gas filled balloon. Since the upthrust on the balloon is more than its weight, it experiences a net upward force and hence it rises up. Next video we will discuss some numericals based on upthrust and relative density. Okay, thank you.